So let's start with our computer formalization in the language Agda. So I'm interacting with Agda through VS Code, but I'll be using the same shortcuts as the Agda mode of Emacs, which is the most popular way to interact with, with Agda. So what I've done here is I've imported a couple modules. So this zero preamble, that's just some stuff that'll allow me to work with the types in the way that I want to for these, for these demos. And then I've also imported this agda.builtin.string. So we don't really have many types to work with yet. We've all really only introduced unit. And so just to give a good example, I wanted to uh, import the built-in string library from, from Agda. And in particular, uh, this operation prim string append that takes two strings and concatenates them together. And so I've, I'm allowing myself to write that more nicely as just plus plus. So the keyboard command that I'm going to be using the most is control C, control L that loads the file. And so it performs all the type checking and make sure everything is well formatted and syntax checks and all that. And so if everything worked out, it'll say all done like this. So one thing I can do is I can what's called infer the type. And so this is an operation that allows me to give Agda a term or an expression, and it tells me what type it is of. And so if I have the string hello, then Agda will report to me that that is a string. So it is a term of type string. So let's go ahead and declare some terms. So to declare a term in Agda, you have to first give its type and then say what the term is. So I could, if I wanted a new term, hello word, and I want it to be a string, I would say it like that. And then I would give its definition. So I'm going to have it be the word hello. Reload. And now we have a term. And so if I infer the type of the term hello word, it says it's a string. So now I have hello word as a term of type string, and I can use that however I want. I'll talk a lot more about this in the future, but we can also have parameterized terms or functions. So I can say greeting takes a string and gives me back another string. And I can say greeting of name is hello word. And a comma and a space, followed by whatever name I give it. So this is now another term of this of this type string arrow string, which again we'll talk more about when we get to functions. And so I can do what's called normalizing a term, which basically means I give Agda some expression and it computes it as far as it can. So if I give it a plus plus b, then it computes that to a b. Whereas if I give it greeting of the string something, then it says hello something. And so how it got that is I gave it greeting and the string something as name, and so it plugged in that string something as name, and so and then it computed this right hand side that says hello word, which is this string capital hello, followed by this string, which is a comma and a space, followed by the string something, which is name, and it concatenated those all together. And so this is just a very basic look at how we can declare new terms and and work with them in Agda. So that's how we introduce new terms into Agda. But let's also talk about how we're going to introduce new types into Agda. And so for my example here, I'm going to be using the example I've been using so far, the unit type. So let me give an informal description of what unit is. So unit 
is a type with exactly one term, which I'll call star. And so remember, we had three different interpretations of what this type meant. In the programming interpretation, we thought of this as the type of zero tuples. In the homotopy interpretation, we thought of this as a contractible or single point space. And in the logic interpretation, we thought of this as a uniquely witness true proposition, a proposition which is true, and moreover, there's a unique witness of its truth. So this is our informal description. This is how we're thinking about it, and how we would talk about it, and how we would describe it. But so if you want to be precise and formal, then we need to introduce this as a type in Agda. And so here's the syntax for declaring a new type in Agda. So I use the data keyword, and then I put the name of the type that I want to introduce, so I'll write it out as the word unit for now. And then I say it's a type, so I say unit colon type. Now you note that I just don't just write unit is a type, I write unit is type L0, and the type will always have this kind of weird L parameter. For now, don't worry about that, just think of that as some bookkeeping that I'm doing on the side to make sure everything works out. We'll talk later on about what L0 is and what all that means. But going back to our type introduction syntax, we have data, the name of the type, and then type L0, and then we use the where keyword. And then after that, we have to say what are the different ways of building something of this type. And so we're going to say that star is a term of type unit. So everything that comes after the where are called the constructors of the type. And so unit has a single constructor, star. And this does it. This creates a new type called unit with a single term called star. And if I want to be fancy, I can create this alias where I say that whenever I write this blackboard one, I mean the type unit. That's one nice thing about Agda is that it's not, I'm not just limited to ASCII. I can use about all the Unicode goodness that I like. And if I hop into Agda and load up this definition, and then I infer what is the type of star, it'll report that star is a type unit. Okay, so that's our computer formalization. That's how we introduce new types, and that's how we introduce new terms. We'll get more, a lot more experience with Agda moving forward, but let me switch now to our hot deductive system. So I mentioned that this deductive system is based off of what are called inference rules. So let me say a little bit more about what an inference rule is and how it works. So the general form of an inference rule is that it has several premises on the top and then a conclusion on the bottom. And so the way to read this is that if j1 through jn hold, then c holds, c follows. So j1 through jn and c are what are called judgments, which are formal statements which declare things about the language of Hot. So the judgments we've seen so far are that A is a type and that little a is a term of type big A. So we're going to have two other kinds of judgments, which I'll introduce later, but these are the kinds of things that I'm going to be putting in place of J1 through Jn and C. And so the way we build up the language in this deductive system is by declaring a bunch of these inference rules which state how our language works by saying, if you have these judgments, then you get this judgment. And as I mentioned, in principle, we can stack these inference rules on top of each other to get deduction trees. And so if we wanted to, we could formalize hot that way. So let me use unit as an example. So here are two rules that describe how unit works. So this one on the left is called the formation rule. And so the formation rule asserts that unit is a type. Notice that the top of this inference rule is blank. And that's because I don't need any premises. I don't need to assume anything. 
I always can assert that unit is a type. And similarly, the introduction rule asserts that star is a term of type unit. So these two inference rules together assert the existence of a type unit and a term star of type unit. So, this, so these two rules are part of an overall recipe for introducing new types in this formal deductive system. So the formation rule asserts the existence of a type, and the introduction rule specifies how to give new terms of that type. And there's going to be a few other kinds of rules, which we'll see later, like the elimination rule and computation rules and coherence rules, to specify other parts of how this type behaves. But today we'll just stick with formation and introduction. And so going back to the computer formalization, we can see that the formation and introduction rule are achieved by the type declaration we had before. So when I say data unit, that's a formation rule. It's saying, hey, there's a new type called unit. And then this next line, which asserts that star is of type unit, that's the introduction rule. It tells me how to make new terms of this type. So this is what it's going to look like when we introduce new types. We'll give an informal description of how that type is supposed to work and what it's supposed to be, and then we'll formalize it in our two different ways. We'll code it up into Agda and give a type declaration that says what the type is and how to build things of it. And then we'll also write out these inference rules, which assert the same thing. So one important thing to note is that in this earlier example, this term greeting here depends on this term hello word. And so we saw that if we computed greeting of world, then it would say hello world. But if I change this term to instead be hola, then Even if I do the exact same expression here, now it says hola world. And so this is the phenomenon of context dependence, that because when I declare this greeting term, this other term, hello word, is in context, or it's in scope. It's available for me to use, and indeed I do, do use it as part of the definition of greeting. And so if hello word is something different than that, then greeting might potentially be something different. And so this is something that we need to take into account. So precisely speaking, a context is a finite list of typed variable names. So like x1 of type a1, x2 of type a2, etc. And so these represent things that we've already declared. So maybe way earlier in my file, I declared some term x1 of type A1. So this is what's called the context. And so this is what's in scope whenever I'm making a new definition. And so we'll use letters like gamma and delta to denote arbitrary contexts. And so instead of our inference rules just being made up of judgments like before, we're instead going to have judgments in context. And so we'll write gamma entails J to assert the judgment J, so like A is a type or A is of type A or whatever, in context gamma. So that allows us to use whatever variables are contained in gamma as part of whatever term we're dealing with in J. So for example, our formation and introduction rules for unit would be written like this instead. So we'd say in any context gamma, unit is a type, and in any context gamma, star is a term of type unit. Usually I'm going to leave off the context when they don't matter and just write the inference rules like this, but in case you see inference rules with these gammas in front, now you know what those mean.